Congratulations. You have taken the first step onto your path to playing guitar by simply watching this video. And you thought this was gonna be hard. This journey is full of fun and creativity, adventure and entertainment, good times, and hopefully a lot of great musical memories. To get you started, we have put together a series of quick and easy to understand videos showing you just how to buy your first acoustic or electric guitar, bass guitar, or amplifier. You learn the basics on what to look for when choosing a first or second instrument, and we'll share some of the common terminology and technical stuff you should know as you begin. We'll teach you about the different guitar types, how to find a guitar that fits your height and body shape, the different types of wood and materials you'll run across while guitar shopping, as well as what to look for in your new instrument to make it a little easier to play. So let's get started. Studies too numerous to mention have pointed out that a music education and a musical household can benefit childhood development, help with spatial skills, and improve test scores and IQ. These are measurable effects to the benefit of music and music education, but it's the metaphysical or invisible energy and positive feelings that music gives us that makes playing an instrument so special to many of us. We call this feeling the vibe or mojo of guitar playing. When you are learning and being creative, either playing or listening to music, you learn that you can easily access that feeling at any time just by picking up your instrument. As you get started, it's best to think of music as a language. To speak the language of music, we need to learn some basic ideas and concepts, just like we did when we were learning to talk. And as with any education, it's best to learn from those who know how to show us just what to do. And just like when we were learning to talk as children, pick up your instrument, go out and talk, or play with others. Since music is the universal language, find your musical voice and let's hear what you have to say. Later in the series of videos, we'll talk about the best way to take lessons and get those basic language skills. Well, I'm sure you've noticed that guitars come in all shapes, sizes, string configurations, and colors. There are only a couple of terms you need to learn to describe the type of guitar you are playing. Most guitars can easily fall into these two categories. An acoustic guitar is generally an instrument that creates its own sound and volume without the need of an amplifier. These guitars can either be big or small. They can come with bronze strings like this model here, or with nylon or composite strings like this classical guitar. Some acoustic guitars can even come with built-in electronics, so you may plug in and amplify the natural acoustic sound of the guitar. An electric guitar generates most of its volume and sound through electronics and amplification. You'll need to plug this type of guitar into an amplifier in order to get most of the sound out. Later in these videos, we'll talk about amplifiers and what to look for when buying your first one. Since people come in all shapes and sizes, thank goodness guitars do too. And one of the keys to having fun while learning how to play is to find the proper fitting guitar for you. By choosing the correct size, you'll find the fit that is most comfortable and that gives you the best opportunity to learn. Scale length refers to the distance from the far end of the fretboard to the bridge or saddle of the instrument. And it's this length that determines what size instrument you should begin on. To find out what size guitar would fit you best, it's best to sit down and hold the guitar in your lap and try to reach that far end of the fretboard. We want you to be able to reach the end of the fretboard or the first position while maintaining a bend or flex in your elbow and without having to overextend your arm. If this distance is too far to reach comfortably, then we can choose a guitar with a smaller scale length. Half size, three quarter size, seven eighth size, and full size guitars were made in order to get the right sized instrument into the hands of the player. It's best to usually start children on a smaller instrument that is sized to fit their growth. By knowing a few things to look for in the construction of the electric or acoustic guitar, it'll be easier for you to determine the quality of the build as well as the quality of the tone that the guitar will produce. With an acoustic guitar, most of its tone and volume is generated by the top wood of the guitar. You'll see that spruce wood is commonly used for guitar tops, although sometimes you'll see mahogany construction, or in the case of classical or nylon string guitars, you'll see cedar and cypress woods being used for the top. Generally speaking, a guitar with a solid top will produce a better tone compared to a guitar with a laminate or plywood top. 
The type of wood that is used for the back and sides of an acoustic guitar is equally as important to the tone that the guitar creates. Typically, you will see mahogany, nato, rosewood, or maple wood used for the back or sides of an acoustic guitar. Once again, solid woods might sound better to your ear, so be certain to try both. The shape of the guitar's body has a lot to do with the comfort of the player, too. This concert style shape is narrower across the waist of the guitar, as well as being a bit shallower in depth when compared to a traditional shaped instrument. And many players will find a smaller bodied guitar more comfortable and easier to hold or sit while learning. Once again, try them both at your local guitar store and see what body shape fits you best. And even though an electric guitar can be hollow like an acoustic guitar, the electric guitar body is usually a solid piece of wood. The density and weight of the wood can help to determine the tone and resonance that the guitar will produce. These woods are usually alder, basswood, ash, pine, or mahogany. Some guitars will even use one type of wood for the back of the body and then add another wood to the top, such as adding maple to a mahogany body. The tuning keys, or machine heads, should feel like they're easy to turn and don't bind or jump when you turn the key. And small turns of the tuning keys can make big changes to the pitch, so go easy at first. It's very important to make the small investment in a good electronic tuner. Today's tuners are easy to use and can help you save time and frustration as you learn to tune your instrument. Just clip it onto the headstock of your guitar and tune it to pitch. It really is this easy. When someone mentions the action of the guitar, they are talking about the height of the strings over the fretboard. The lower the action is, or the closer the strings are to the fretboard, the easier the guitar will be to play since it's easier to press the string to the fretboard. This adjustment can be made a couple of ways, either by raising or lowering the bridge saddles or by adjusting the truss rod of the neck. Both adjustments are best left to the professional luthier or repairman. However, over time, you will learn to do many of these easy fixes on your own. Most guitars come with a predetermined warranty from the company who made it. This means that the manufacturer will pick up the cost of the repairs if something the manufacturer did during construction caused that guitar to fail. The duration of this warranty can be from a few months all the way up to the lifetime of the instrument. However, the warranty does not cover your basic maintenance and upkeep. For those issues such as height of the action, string changes, or minor repairs, it's always best to develop a relationship with a local music store or certified guitar luthier. Just like with your automobile, keeping your instrument maintained and in proper working order can prevent costlier repairs down the road. The safest way to travel with your new guitar and to protect it from the rigors of travel is to keep it in either a soft-sided case or gig bag or in a more protective hard shell case. A gig bag can have either soft or semi-rigid sides and is usually made from a heavy-duty fabric or leather. The benefits to using a gig bag to tote your instrument is that they are generally lighter in weight, can offer you additional ways to carry your guitar with shoulder straps or secondary handles, and will usually take up less space than a hard shell case. That being said, a hard sided case will always offer you the most protection from bumps or the occasional dropping of an instrument. Whatever you choose, always protect your instrument. As I touched on in the beginning of this video, the benefits to learning an instrument are endless. But since we all learn at different speeds, as well as responding to different types of teaching, you can determine for yourself the best way for you to learn. Many find the teacher-student experience still to be the best way for learning since it offers you a lesson plan, as well as the immediate feedback and guidance that a teacher provides. However, another way to learn guitar and better your skills is via video lessons either on the internet via Skype live with an instructor or with a more focused video library of lessons. Many players and students prefer this method since it allows you to work on what skills and techniques that you want to learn as well as allowing you to work at your own pace and on your own schedule. Try them both and pick a lesson plan that works best for you, but do pick a lesson plan. Be sure to check out the other videos in this series as they will get more in depth and assist you in selecting your first instruments. Use these videos to help you take the next step and put a guitar into your life or the life of your kids. This is the path that we're all on together. Now go out and make your music.